VV, in my quest to understand whether or not there is a God, I've seen some of these so-called proofs that are extant in the Christian tradition, the so-called being or ontological proof and first cause cosmological proof and arguments both sides. In the Hindu tradition, what do you deal with in terms of these kinds of being or causation types of proofs or demonstrations of God? Traditionally, Hindu practitioners, and I believe this is equally true in all traditions, the practitioners of any religion are not interested in proofs of the existence of God. They have somehow uh, been satisfied that there is a God, which is why they go to church or synagogue or wherever. However, theologians in all traditions, and certainly in the Hindu also, have come up with interesting rational arguments for the existence of God. Now, in the Hindu world, there is a whole school of thought called the Nyaya Darshana, the Nyaya or the logical school of philosophy, which developed many interesting theories or proofs, as we would say, for the existence of God. But in the process, they developed logic. There was tremendously sophisticated, complex logical principles about epistemological arguments and foundations for human knowledge were developed. Now, so in essence, the desire to understand or prove God prove, was the energy to develop a logical system exactly. of thinking. Exactly. It was very interesting because in the Christian tradition, I would, I would say it was just the opposite because this rational proofs and all came actually after contact through the Arabs uh, with ancient Greek thought and Aristotle. And it is Aristotle who sort of inspired people like Thomas Aquinas to bring about, to put everything in a logical framework. So logic inspired medieval scholasticism, one might say, whereas in Hinduism, the scholasticism, if that's a word, was inspired by uh, wanting to prove the existence of God. But there are two interests. The, the usual proofs are the same, that just as uh, there, is, uh, we, there is a cause for everything, uh, not simply of artifacts, human-made things. There must be causes for, la for lakes and mountains and streams and rivers and the whole world, and therefore that cause is what God is. So in the Hindu tradition, we do have very similar arguments about uh, everything having a cause. But there are two very interesting ideas. I was reflecting on uh, the similarity, as it were, with, uh, with modern science. Because one of the arguments given in the Nyaya school is that things come together in this universe and what brings things together to make several units and entities and integral wholes? The principle that is causing the union and the construction of things would be the divine. And by the same token, everything ultimately perishes. And what is responsible for the decay of things is also the divine. So there is this very interesting parallel, one might say, between the worldview of modern physics uh, and the Hindu logicians who tried to say that in order to explain the fact that things have come together to constitute a universe, a very diverse multiplicity of particles ultimately making a universe that has an integrity of its own, uh, that combining principle is what they call God. But likewise, they say that ultimately everything has to dissolve and disintegrate, and that disintegrating principle is also the divine. They, they, they describe it in these ways. And what makes it interesting is that in the current physical worldview, in the so-called standard model, one talks of this strong interaction 
as the force that binds the nuclear particles together, the protons and neutrons are bound together by the strong force. And the weak force is the one that disintegrates. We use these words strong and weak because of the, uh, uh, for quantitative reasons. But the fact is that there are two different force fields and these they correspond more or less to what the Naya logicians were saying. I want to add right away that I am by no means suggesting, as some would perhaps, that uh, the ancient Hindus knew about the strong and weak interactions. Far from it. I am simply impressed by this rather interesting parallel between the two. Do you put a significance in that parallel, that there are ways of apprehending reality that different people can get in different ways? I do uh, consider this significant in that the insights that are implicit in both these perspectives are essentially the same in a way. Uh, the insights that we, that some human beings have about the nature of the complex world in which we live is what constitutes ultimately science and uh, uh, I would say revealed metaphysics, if you will. And uh, so I, I think they are, in, they're, it's more than a mere coincidence. It is simply a reflection, again, of the commonality of the human spirit more than anything else. But right. if I put my science hat on, what I would say is you're right. These do reflect a, uh, an appreciation of reality that you have things that come together, things that come apart, and you have to explain it. And the ancients, in whatever culture, explained it with gods. And now in modern science, we have the strong force and the weak force. We explain it with science. So we don't need the gods. Not really. Uh, I, of course, we don't need a god in science. I'll be the first to admit that. But what one tries to explain, however uh, uh, unsatisfactorily to the atheists, is the existence of the strong and the weak force. It, one is the strong and weak force explain the existence of nuclei and the decay of fundamental particles, but we do not have anything to explain the existence of the strong and the weak forces. That is where the metaphysical or the religious explanation comes. Now, scientists may reject. Why? Because it is not necessary for them. They can start with the strong and weak force and explain the entire physical universe. What distinguishes science from religion is that science explains the phenomenal world after it has come into existence with the Big Bang or whatever. Religion tries to explain the Big Bang itself. See, and that we have to be clear about what he tries to. Many scientists don't see a need for an explanation of, so the idea of first cause, to use an Aristotelian term, is not necessary uh, for many scientists. Others find it not, if not necessary, a beautiful hypothesis. Mm -hmm. This reminds me, by the way, of the famous story of the French mathematician Laplace, who had written a treatise uh, called Celestial Mechanics and dedicated it to Napoleon. And Napoleon, who was, by the way, a good mathematician also, he read through the whole thing and he, he said, to have told Mr. Laplace, how come I don't find any mention of God in this treatise on Celestial Mechanics? And Laplace said, well, I didn't need that hypothesis for this. It's, uh, I can explain the whole world without that hypothesis. And Napoleon is said to have reported this to another mathematician, Lagrange, and he said, ah, oh, but it's such a beautiful hypothesis. So the moral of the story is that sometimes we make hypotheses which are not necessary. Really, the physical world, Laplace did not need God to explain the physical world, but to say that it came from uh, God is an interesting, uh, certainly a beautiful hypothesis for at least some people. But coming back to your original question, uh, there are two kinds of explanations or proofs, so-called. One is the causal causation proof. The other is the existence proof. And this is also interesting. From the Hindu tradition, existence itself 
calls for belief in God because why should there be this existence? Uh, this is uh, a very uh, profound and important question, and we uh, at various times we we talk about this, we reflect on this. Why is there this physical universe? Why is there anything at all uh, when really there is no reason to be? So that existence is also regarded as uh, a proof. And in one interesting Indian uh, vision, God did not need, there was nothing in the universe, but the divine got pretty bored with an eternity where nothing was happening and started doodling. Mm -hmm. And the universe is nothing but the doodling of the divine, or as we say in the Hindu phraseology, God's play. Leela is the word. Many people, even when they are under difficult circumstances, would say it's all God's play, God's leela. So that's the, uh, the Hindu view.